Hello friends, you're the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing Runebound this evening which is, as you might know, one of my favorite games. I've already played the, um, the base game, I've played with the Island of Dread and with the Midnight Expansion so today I'm gonna play with the Sands of Al-Kalim Expansion and by the way, this one is by Fantasy Flight Games. In addition to the Sands of Al-Kalim, I'm going to take a small card expansion. That will be the Traps and Terrors expansion. A challenge card expansion. Which has, by the way, a really fun box cover. Okay. Um, Actually, this is a game that I enjoy much more solitaire than uh, in a multiplayer game. And uh, as I did with my other playthroughs, I'm going to use uh, Mr. Skeletor's solo rules. You can find them on BGG. You also find a link to them on my homepage. But in addition, uh, I kind of modified these rules. I came up with uh, some ideas of my own. So overall it's going to be quite a mixture of, of, of the official rules of Mr. Solitaire rules and of some of my house rules here. Okay, so let's set up the game. Okay, so the game is set and uh, as the title suggests uh, this takes place in a desert environment and goal is to get to complete four of these quests here there are five different types of quests and you gotta complete four uh, quests of a different type each we gotta manage to do this in uh, before the threat track reaches ten according to Mr. Skeletor's solo rules. And as you can see here, these are the solo rules for the Sands of Al Kalim. So um, there is quite a bit actually. And in addition, I came up with quite a few modifications here. But uh, I will explain all that during the game. Okay. Um, my character is quite a weird guy, Kyle, son of Gurin, a Dorn defender, and this is his miniature. Oh, come on. There we go. Exactly. And He comes with a pretty crappy ability. Treat your weapon and armor items of cost four or more as if their card texts were blank. So basically that means we're not allowed to use weapon and armor items uh, of a better quality. Once per combat phase you may take one uh, Exhaustion to receive a plus three bonus to a combat roll. Skills, jump two, swim two. I have my doubts that, that swimming in the desert will be extremely powerful skill, but you never know. Here's some good values though. Um, and of course there are always other uh, cards than weapons or uh, armor available, we might find some rituals or maybe, I don't know, artifacts, whatever. So there is still a way to gain some cool equipment, but this is definitely a, a, a harsh restriction. Okay, so as you can see here, that's a pretty weird coincidence. There are barely items in the market 
um, decks only these allies and and uh, following the uh, the standard rules there are these extra allies here most of them come with special abilities that are more useful in the desert but my house rules uh, tell me uh, if I draw an ally I roll a die, 10 sided die, and on a 1 to 5 I replace that ally with one of these special allies. Otherwise, uh, the drawn ally will come into play. So, uh, yeah, I simply like to see the old allies too. Now we ended up here with a special ally, a minor Ginny. But this is a kind of a magic city that can appear or disappear. So right now it's not on the board yet. And we have here a, a diminutive scoundrel. That's another one of these desert allies. And they have an, a big advantage compared to the other allies here. They have uh, a good uh, exhaustion rating here. And you need this if you want to travel through the desert. I will explain later why. So, um, basically these allies with a exhaustion value of zero, they are pretty useless right now. Which is, of course, bad. Okay, and by the way, we're supposed to place our hero card on this uh, new well, component. Uh, and here is indicated how many legendary quests we're allowed to have. And this, uh, here the quests are then placed. Right now we are not allowed to have any because basically we need to um, we need to deal some experience points for experience counters before we are allowed to gain one of these legendary quests. I think I'm going to place it more like this. So I can place my um, my experience counters down here. <clears throat> okay. So we've also determined randomly the starting position of this guy. This is here in uh, Iram, which is pretty good because it's right next to some uh, green challenges, so that was a lucky start here. And, uh, well, let's roll some die. And before you start your movement action, you have to make a decision here. You can choose if you want to move by night, if you want to travel by night, or if you want to travel by day. Now, why is that important? Well, traveling by day through the desert can be a pretty bad idea because it's damn hot out there. <clears throat> so if you travel by day, um, you will get exhausted, at least very often. There are a few exceptions to that. Mm, let me see. <clears throat> So if you start in a lowland space, which are these ones here, you're not getting exhausted. In addition, I, uh, I've come up with a house rule. If I start in a, in a town, I also won't get exhausted during that move. If you start in these really bad desert spaces here, which are dunes, then you take two exhaustion instead of one. And by the way, all your allies also take that uh, much exhaustion. In addition, there are some some other effects. You might to roll a story die uh, if you don't face a challenge. And there it also depends on uh, daytime, if there is daytime or nighttime, uh, what happens. 
Usually uh, during daytime it's a little less dangerous if it comes to the um, to the enemies, <clears throat> but uh, you suffer more from exhaustion. Okay, so for now I'm deciding to uh, travel during daytime, and so I roll my five dice, and I'm simply. I wonder if I should actually roll these dice. No, I think I won't. <clears throat> I simply travel here and travel down the road and simply face that first challenge. Okay, so now to determine if I draw from the uh, from the sands of our Kalim deck or from this uh, Traps and Terror stack. I'll roll a die. I don't know one to four. I draw from the sense of Alkalim. Okay. So let's see what happens now. Okay. So this says Earth and More Abomination. Hmm. It seems to be just another tear in the landscape, a small crevice that must be crossed. So, now you see here two life point values. And the lower one indicates its life point during day, the upper one during night. Most of these, uh, of these creatures have a, a higher life point value during day because they're not that exhausted uh, during night because they're not that exhausted during the day. So that means that uh, that these challenges become more dangerous during the night. But not all of them. Like this one. So before combat test jump, which is good because I'm good in jumping. If you fail, the earthen maw closes on your leg. You take one wound and you cannot escape from this combat. Okay. <clears throat> now let's do this test. Okay, so I got a four. No, wait a second. What is jump? Jump is that hand, but that's also a four. Plus two is a six. And I need a 13, so I need a 7 to be successful here. And I have that. So now I simply fight this uh, abomination. Mm. Well, I think I do a ranged combat here. Shouldn't be so hard. I do only one damage. So, let's see, we need to beat an 8, I've got a combat value of 4. Okay, that's uh, definitely enough to do a wound. Then, this thing attacks, and uh, it's doing not bad here, so I need a 6, otherwise I would take 2 wounds. And I managed to do that with an 8. Finally, I have to defend against the magic attack. And I need a 4. Yeah, okay. So that combat round was good. Then I can... Yeah, I can attack again in the ranged combat phase. Managed to do this. So another hit for the abomination here. Let's go on. Okay, that was a success in the close combat, magic combat. Ugh! Well, that sucked, but luckily it does no damage here. Uh, and then again, just an attack. Maybe the last one now. Ah, that's just a four, but that's good enough in range combat. So it means we killed that earthen maw and 
We gain three bucks for that. And in addition, one of these green experience counters. Okay. Nice. Okay, now at the end of the turn, we roll the threat dice. And I have a threat level of 18. Oh gosh, what a horrible star. That's exactly an 18. So that means that the threat level goes up. Okay, so if you know my house rules to simulate the, um, <clears throat> the fluctuation of the market that you have in a multiplayer game, anytime the threat deck goes up, I roll for some cards. Uh, there is a rule for that. You can find that also on my homepage, or I will also explain that in my early... <clears throat> early videos and on a specific result I will discard the cards, remove them from the um, from the market stacks and that's it and we've lost that way we've lost two cards the Accolade of Flame and the Sister of Vengeance well they weren't that good anyway <clears throat> okay Now we take a fatigue token because I actually, or exhaustion token, because I actually decide to travel again by day. And uh, I start here on a road and I'll simply move here now and then attack another challenge. This time we have to draw. <clears throat> from the traps and um, terror track. Ah, look at that. Spirits rising. On the ear of the ghost moon, the much of the spirit passes through terror north. Their touch harms some and heals others. All heroes must test resist taking a minus four penalty to the roll if they are currently in a swamp, which is not the case, forest or mountain space. While we're on the road, so we're safe here, <clears throat> those who fail lose three exhaustion. Those who succeed may regain any combination of wounds, of three wounds and exhaustion total, from among the heroes and allies. In addition, we can replenish that uh, single that adventure marker here. So we're gonna place that randomly again on the board. Now let's do that resist test first. We have a re what was the test? Uh, it was a test 14. So, well, we need a Ten, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think we can make that. Ah, just a nine. Bad luck here. So what does that mean? We lose three exhaustion. That's not good because we're in the desert now, but okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that challenge marker has shown up here, which is pretty good because it's not so far from me. But uh, we might have to cross the desert of eternity, which is, of course, not that great. We might take the road here, though. We'll see about these things. Um, Anyway, let's let's draw another card. First, we're going to roll again from which deck? So that's the Sands of Alkalim deck, and okay. So this is a Dune Wretch, and that's another Abomination. 
It has nothing to live for, so it attacks anyone it sees. Before combat, test hide to get to drop on the wedge. If you succeed, you may begin in the combat in any phase that you wish. Hmm. Well, yeah, why not? Um, so we need a 9 to be successful here, and we are. So that might be useful because if we begin the combat in the magic phase, we might actually be able to avoid that uh, melee attack here, if we're a little lucky. So we need a 7 to be successful here. And we have that, so that guy takes a wound. And now we come to the, well, basically to the next combat round. We start now with, um, with ranged combat. Uh, but that's going to be tough. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to... I'm going to defend myself here. <sighs> yeah. So I need a 12 to be successful here. And I am. That was good. That was great. That's a 14. And then I'm going to do this melee combat. And again, I will... Uh, I will try a defense action here. I need a 9. And I have that too. So, uh, we got a 10 here. So finally, we can do our second magic attack. And we need a 7. And we have that easily. That's a 12. So we managed to kill that guy without any losses. So we gain two bucks and another experience marker. Okay. There we go. Um, So this challenge goes away now. Okay, um, I think, oh, well, first we got to roll again for the threat track now. And this time it's fine, so we're going to place a marker here. I think it's a good idea now to move back into the city. Yeah. So I can roll four dice and now wait a second. I think I can decide <clears throat> to rest and only roll three dice and then I will lose one of these exhaustion markers and because uh, well, on the other hand it doesn't really matter okay I will lose one of them and I'm gonna travel by night I guess or by day I'll travel by day take that take another exhaustion marker back. I think that's the way how it works. First you can, if you rest, you can get rid of your exhaustion markers and then if you, if you start your travel action you get one, a new one. <clears throat> so we can roll now three dice and we got our two roads so we can travel back to Iram. Okay, so now we are in the city and we can explore the bazaar. Now...
see, are there any special rules? I'm not absolutely sure. I don't think so, actually. You can buy these survival gear things, which is neat. But the rest stays more or less the same. Okay, so what we do now is we draw a card from the deck. And that's an artifact, the Scabbard of Masking. Activate to lower the printed cost of this item and one other of your items to zero. This is absolutely amazing. Is it? Hmm. It's interesting. Now, well, Treat your weapon and armor items of cost four or more as if their card exists, texts were blank. So I guess, huh, guess I'm lucky here. I guess this actually will allow me to use items um, of a higher value. Yeah pretty sure about that that's awesome that's that's just fucking perfect sorry uh, so I'm gonna buy uh, this thing for three bucks and huh now this guy actually is a really good hero because with this this is the key artifact that he needs actually then we're gonna pay one to get rid of all these um, of all these exhaustion markers. There we go. And well, I think I think that's it then. Okay, so the threat track is fine. And now I'm going to try to travel here, this area here, the Bleeding Sands, Barrens of Decay, and yeah, I'm going to try to solve these challenges there. So I'm allowed to roll five dice. Uh huh. Well, that's not good. And actually, I traveled by day, obviously. So the problem is now. We ha no. Wait a second. These are the story effects here. Yeah. So this is a mirage. Uh, the the woods are mirage markers, and that means that I will actually lose for each of these. Uh, woods markers, uh, woods symbols, I have to take an exhaustion, which is obviously pretty bad. And that means that basically these two remain here, hmm. and well, not sure what to do. I might travel here down the road and then try to cross that canyon. It isn't that simple though, but I think I won't gonna do that. I think I'm gonna travel here. I might even consider attacking that challenge, but that's a little risky, isn't it? <sighs> okay, honestly, I don't wanna risk that right now. Um, I think I will move on. So I gotta take another exhaustion marker. <sighs> yeah. And then I'm gonna move here into the desert. I'm gonna try to do it at least. Now I can roll only four dice. Well, that was good. 
the mountain symbol represent these canyons here. So I can cross these shadow skate rift here and uh, these represent the dunes. So I can now enter here and face that challenge. These planes represent the dunes here. Okay, so this is again a Sands of Alkalim card. And this is a Death Dabbler, a sorcerer. And here you can now see that he's a little less uh, a little less tough uh, during day. <clears throat> Some sorcerers gain their powers by draining others' life essences. Their victims recover slowly. If you are knocked out by this challenge, take this card. During your next refresh phase, you must discard this card and your turn immediately ends. <clears throat> okay. So. Well... Okay, we'll see about that. <clears throat> so I'm going to defend during this ranged attack. I need a 9. I got that. Then we have here a 10 in melee, and I'm going to attack here. So I need a 6 to be successful here, and I don't have that. I only have a 4, which sucks. Luckily, I don't take a hit. Now, we have a 15, so I need an 11 in magical combat here. And I don't have that either. So I take a wound. And we have to start again. So, ranged combat. That is a success. We needed a 9. And now again the 6 for the close combat. And this time I was successful here. And these guys gain also a wound. Now let's see the magical combat. A 11. Yeah, we got that. Very good. That's a 12. And hopefully the last round of combat now. First we need a 7 in ranged combat, which we just have. And then we need a 6, which we also have in close combat. So if we manage to kill the death dabbler. Which gives me four bucks and an experience token. Okay, so let's roll for the threat track now. Uh, gosh, and again it goes up a 16. Now that's really not looking good. Okay, so there we are. And again, we have to roll for some items, basically only the cheaper ones, which is in this case only that one here, this winter's row. So we're going to roll, and on a 1 to 5, it goes away. Well, it stays, which is good. And then we will place an additional item in each city except the ones that are not on the board. So that's again one of my house rules here just to as I said to simulate the fluctuation here. So this is a ritual for example which we could use of course by the way now I guess we can use them all scabbard of masking and we have a burning priest. And now we got a roll 
again and on a 1 to 5 we will replace that ally with a special ally so that's not the case here so this guy stays here but he's not that bad because he has two of these uh, fatigue so he won't take damage uh, right at the beginning of the journey that's at least something and we go on and we have here the book of fate Here we will see a steel tooth trap. And finally here, that's another ally. So let's see, a one to five, it's replaced. No, it isn't. So we have here the clawed chameleon. Well, this, which is pretty expensive, nine bucks. Okay. But that's cool because uh, it comes with a high exhaustion value, so that might be helpful. So we're really unlucky here with these uh, with this threat track, actually. Now I'm thinking because I already have a wound and a few of these uh, exhaustion. Marcus, I think, hmm, well, to enter this, I need a swamp. Uh, these here, what are they called? These are barons, yeah. I need a swamp symbol to enter that. So I think what I do now is, I roll, I guess I'm going to roll one die and that allows me then to discard three of these exhaustion markers. And I might also roll two, hmm, not sure. Yeah, okay, why not? I roll two and then I'm going to travel by night. So that means I don't lose exhaustion because I start in the desert. I would have, uh, otherwise I would have to pay two, but I don't want that. So I travel by night. And well, I'm not sure. I think I will actually move here, simply here. That's it. Just this one step into the barrens of decay. Um, does that make any sense? Well, at least if I start on the next turn, I don't take that much uh, exhaustion. Okay, and now because we don't face a challenge, we have to go to the story step, and that means we have to roll a die. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Remember it's night. Okay, so the player must draw and resolve an adventure card as described under Nighttime Ambushes on page 4. Okay, so this is actually another house rule that comes here now into play. What I'm going to do is I will only draw that card if I roll a 7 to 10 because Otherwise, it might actually be an advantage for me to draw this card, you know. I can always provoke these ambushes, uh, and uh, in that way, it's not necessary for me to travel all these ways. So in a solo game, that could really be an advantage here. So I'm not gonna... Uh, I'm just gonna draw that card on a 7 to 10. Yeah, okay, so I have to fight this ambush. In addition, but before I do that, I wanna, I wanna do these other things. We have a well is found, the hero and his companions, uh, if it's night, yeah. 
come upon an old well sunk into a hillside and partake of its strength-giving water. Your hero and his allies each discard one exhaustion. That's a good thing. And finally we have the hills symbol. Stolen gold is recovered. Your hero stumbles upon a spot of freshly dug earth. Poking at it for a bit, they find a hastily concealed sack of coins, either hidden by bandits or buried by animals. Your hero receives one gold. Okay, and now we have to fight that ambush. Okay, so an ambush is basically uh, a challenge. Um, of the color of the highest valued um, adventure counter that I've traded away. So for now I haven't traded anything, so I'm going to draw a, a green one anyway. Now let's see from which pile. Okay, that's a standard one. So that is a torch bearer priest. <clears throat> and this time we're lucky here it's night and this guy is actually weaker than during the day. <clears throat> it's a crusader by the way. Um, in addition, now there are two things special here. If we wouldn't, uh, if we would want to flee, there would be a minus 10 to an escape test because this is an ambush. <clears throat> and uh, the second thing is we won't get the reward. We only get the um, the experience points but not the reward from the cards if we manage to defeat that ambush. He claims to bring the light of Kalos to the ignorant people of Al-Kalim but all he, he brings is strife. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to attack him in ranged combat. All I need is a 5 here, and I was successful. So that's one hit against him. Then we need a 10 in melee combat. Hmm. Yeah, okay. And I got that, very good. And then I'm actually considering to take that fatigue marker and receive a plus three bonus to a combat roll. I can do that once per turn. So I got now a seven and I need an eight in magical combat now which I have. Okay, and then we're going to do another round. Ranged combat, I attack, I need a 5, and I have that, so that means I killed this guy. And as I said, sadly my only reward, reward is here an experience token. Oh, well, that's at least something. Actually, I think I made a mistake. I think when I did this, yeah, I think when I did this last travel action from here to there, I actually wasn't allowed to heal and then move that single step. I had to roll a die and see if it worked or not. Um, I guess we might do that right now. So I think I ended up with... I'm not sure. With two dice? One die? I don't know anymore. Uh, it's not really a problem. I don't know. Whatever. I missed it. Fine. Next time I'll think about it. Okay, so now... Let's roll for the thread track. Now that was close. 
I'm really bad. I'm, I'm really rolling terribly here on the threat track. I just managed to survive this round. And uh, now I'm simply going to move um, by day, take another exhaustion marker here, and then move here to that green challenge. Let's see. That's a five. So this time it's from the Traps and Terrors. Oh. And I realized something. I made another mistake actually. Although this is not. Because sometimes. Did I? No, I didn't. The point is here. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you see here, these guys, they are sometimes, they are always, they only come with one life point value. Because they don't have this uh, special rule with the two different life point values that comes with the sense of alkaline. <clears throat> but I still want to want to reflect this rule so I came up with these house rules now and I got this little uh, table here so I roll a 10 sided die and it's day now if I roll a 1 this thing will have a plus 1 strength but only if I roll a 1 because it's day and it's not that likely that uh, these guys are stronger or these um, Or more dangerous or whatever okay so that's not the case if I travel by night then on a 7 to 10 this thing would have a plus one value so let's see now this says sudden separation and it's a yeah a really interesting trap here before combat test jump I only got that plus two on jump. If you fail, you take two damage and you may not use allies during this challenge. Okay, so let's hope for the best here. I got a six, so I need a nine to be successful here. Yeah. And I have that, it's a 10, very good. Magic, if you do not defeat this challenge, by the end of this phase, you escape but lose your next turn. What? Well, that sucks. Shit. So that's pretty useless, actually. So basically, I, I think that means... I cannot do anything here. I simply have to run away, lose a turn, and this thing stays undefeated. Great. Oh, well, that really sucked. Yeah, okay. Well, there is no way for me to, to defeat this because I can only do one damage. And... So I don't have to roll because this thing also doesn't do any damage. So what happens is I simply lose a turn. And this is placed here at this undefeated challenges. And I move back here. Well, that wasn't great. And, well, then I got a roll here. That's a 12, so this time I was lucky. And then I can roll again because I lose a turn. I just made it a 15. Holy moly. Okay. So that's it for now. 
Okay, I think I'm going to load this up now. And I'm afraid it's not looking that great. The, uh, the thread track goes up. I'm doing really bad here. And well, I already have four experience, which isn't so bad. Well, the good thing is actually this card here, this a scabbard of masking. That's an extremely strong card if you play this guy because it, it basically uh, simply denies his penalty and uh, that's pretty cool, no doubt here. Okay, um, well fine then, uh, maybe we're a little more lucky in the next turns. Uh, hope to see you then or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.